This is the second video on futures thinking, and this one is about terminology and tools. In futures thinking, there are a lot of words and there are a lot of tools. I have pulled out a bunch of them that I find very applicable and very meaningful when it comes to using futures thinking as a mechanism for strategic work. You can pause the video and you can read the text when it comes to that. First of all, let's differ between megatrends, trends and signals. Signals are these tiny anomalies that are strange and makes us go, hmm, that was weird. And these signals happen in the horizon. So normally we scan the horizon to evaluate the strength of these signals. The signals can then snowball into trends and trends have an impact on us. It might be temporal, it might affect somebody else, but they are real. And trends might even snowball into megatrends that are unstoppable shifts like the internet. What's interesting when it comes to futures thinking are the trends and the signals. We use them to understand the possible futures that might unfold. All of the possible futures and out of them are some plausible futures where the likelihood of things happening has a certain degree. And out of these, there might be preferable futures. Futures that also has a likability, futures that we like to happen. Normally when we do strategic work, we forecast what is going to happen. We use our budgeting to that, we use our planning to do that. But in futures thinking, we calculate backwards from the preferable futures. That's called backcasting. I'll come back to that. When it comes to understanding the possible and the plausible and the preferable futures, we use signal sorting. For each of the signals or trends, we ask ourselves these two questions. What's the likelihood of the effect in my context? And what's the likability of the effect in my context? And that gives us a two by two matrix where we have a likelihood on one axis and likability on the other axis. And we place the trends and the signals in that two by two matrix. And based on that, we have something where we can invest our time and our money in it. In the area with high likelihood and high likability, well, just get going. In the area with low likability and low likelihood, we can ignore that for now. But in the two other areas, for example, where we have a high likability, but not that much of a likelihood, how can we make that happen? How can we nurture that? Because we would really like that to happen. And in the other area where we have a high likelihood, but we do not like it, how can we actively avoid that? Now we're stepping into the areas of combining signals with strategy. We can also play a game that calls futures wheel. If this happens, then that happens. So we're looking at the causality or the effect, the ripple effect of trends. In the blue circle, we put a specific trend or event. In the red circles around that, we try to understand what is the impact of the direct results of that trend when it unfolds. And then the, in the third circle of circles, the green circles, we write the indirect results. We want to investigate what are the ripple effects of something happening. For example, the internet or when the future of food really kicks in. All of that leads us to further understanding scenarios. What might be? We imagine some of these signals unfolding either in a bad or a good way or slow or fast or all over the world or just in my world. We describe it very, very detailed to use our imagination to understand the scenarios. And we use the scenarios to backcast. We take our scenarios and then we first calculate backwards from it to the long term, the mid term, and the short term area. And then we use that understanding to calculate forwards again. We take the future, we calculate back to understand how we can calculate forwards again. In that way, we use all the signals and all the trends to evaluate the possible and preferable futures. In the next video, we talk about the practical application.